Aloha and welcome back and this will be a continuation of KOK question time. The question today, uh, I've been asked this question, uh, I've answered this question, but there were more likes for this than anything else so I'm going to answer it again. The question is by Gabriel Jimenez, um, you know, what's my opinion of Trump basically? Okay, so <laughs> a couple of things. Hillary Clinton was the chosen one. I'm absolutely sure of this. However, Hillary Clinton is such a high-level traitor, like to an, another degree of treason, uh, that there were and are many in the higher-ups, especially within the military, it would have been the straw that broke the camel's back. And while Hillary had been anointed and was the chosen one to become the next president, it became clear to the powers that be that they could not select her. Now, make no mistake, the elections in America are not elections, they are selections. The electronic, uh, electronic voting machines, uh, gerrymandering, and all sorts of other techniques that are used uh, are, are proof positive that there is no legitimate elections in America. So make that clear. And by the way, we have new technology, blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology, which would make legitimate foolproof voting possible. So keep that in mind if you truly want a democratic election. So anyway, they selected somebody other than Hillary. Now, they brought in Trump, and I have to give him some credit because Trump had that air of independence. You know, He's a multi-billionaire. He's his own man. He doesn't need the money. Uh, that played very well with a lot of people, very effectively, obviously, with good people, <laughs> people I know of as well. Um, and the, the media hated him, right? So he's adversarial, and he's pointing out that the media isn't legit. Of course, those of us who are paying attention have known that the mass media is nothing but propaganda for decades now. <laughs> Um, but Trump was allowed to say it. He was authorized to say these populist messages. He was also allowed to say that he was going to appoint a special prosecutor uh, for Hillary Clinton, which of course he has not done. Um, he was saying a lot of the things that were very populist, such as, you know, these policies in the Middle East were horrendously unpopular. Uh, many people know that 22 American service members a day are committing suicide because they've been sent off to fight wars for Israel. And uh, he was saying during the whole elections process um, that uh, Syria was uh, stupid, we shouldn't have anything to do with it, we get nothing out of it, Obama uh, you know, is wrong to do this, da 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 And of course he totally reverses that as well. It's the same pattern, you know, <laughs> you, you can say whatever you want, and, and what they're saying, those that are defending Trump and, and supporting Trump, they're saying he was playing 4D, I, I hear 5D chess, and, and, and this kind of nonsense. Right, so when he does things that are completely counter to the interests of the American people, uh, continuation of the never-ending war policies for Israel, um, it's 5D chess. So was it, it wasn't 5D chess when Obama was doing it, or Bush, but, but it is with Trump, because, I don't know, whatever. The other uh, thing that I have pointed out about Trump, he's an egomaniac on steroids. Now. In a better world, in a healthy world, we would automatically disqualify somebody for that <laughs> office, public office, as an ego fucking maniac. Are you kidding me? Come on. We want people who are actually genuinely compassionate, who have altruistic uh, and spiritual motivations that go beyond themselves and their own self enrichment, uh, their own delusions of grandeur and uh, you know egotistical view of themselves. Um, so Trump would be disqualified in a healthy world, but we're not living in a healthy world. So fair enough, a multi-billionaire egomaniac gets to you know, run for president and become the president. And, and ultimately, uh, this is all on the back of he's adversarial to the mainstream media. Um, he's attacked by the Israeli press. Some of those that I really love and respect who are still supporting Trump as far as I know, that's one of their big arguments, that uh, Trump is really attacked in the media in Israel, which in all honesty, you get a lot of good information in the Israeli press. They're allowed to say a lot of stuff that wouldn't be allowed to be said uh, by the goy <laughs> at the end of the day. So, you know, this is another clever argument uh, that, that's made, but really rather transparently false if you ask me. They had to make Trump look adversarial. They have to make him look populist. They couldn't have another cardboard cutout Democrat Republican charade because nobody was buying it uh, by the last election cycle. So they had to have someone new. It's kind of like uh, a Jeremy Corbyn, but on the reverse end in the UK. Jeremy Corbyn uh, wasn't appointed. He actually came out of uh, out of the shadows 
of the, the biggest uh, party in the UK, the Labour Party. You know, I, I know Jeremy Corbyn, I've met him several times. Um, he supported uh, my mission for Palestine. Um, this guy was not supposed to be uh, running for the Labour leadership and, and ultimately potentially Prime Minister, but he got there because he isn't a cardboard cutout. That throughout his career he has stood for policies that were deeply unpopular and, and went against the whole war machine. And so they had to, similarly, they had to make Trump look like this in the opposite way because Trump is more of on the right side and he's not a socialist and so on and so forth. But the point is, anybody who appears to not be one of these cardboard cutout prostitute politicians is, is what they needed. So there, there came Trump. And, you know, he fit the bill. He bought some time. He bought time like Obama bought time. Uh, after Bush, you know, people were really questioning, are we the greatest nation in the world? Which was the greatest gift that Bush gave. Are we really? And if we are, how do we have this asshole George Bush as president? This, you know, silver spoon, uh, failed businessman, coke snorting, uh, deserting during Vietnam, loser, is the president. And, and we live in the greatest country in the world. Right. Okay. So, everybody was questioning that. But then Obama came. And aside from the overt racist, um, who just hate him because he's black, which, you know, there are definitely some of those. Um, you know, people thought, oh, America's great again. Certainly in the world, like, oh, America's, America is great. Yeah, you know, they've got a black president, and he, he's going to close down Guantanamo, you know, the Bush policy of Guantanamo, get us out of Iraq, and, you know, he's going to do all that, and, you know, America's great again. So they bought time with Obama, and they bought time with Trump. Of course, Trump has gotten into office and he's reversed himself on policies uh, in the Middle East in particular where, you know, many Americans knew and know that 22 American service members today are committing suicide because they're off to fight Israeli wars, committing horrendous crimes, coming home and having to deal with the reality of the great crimes they've committed, killing women and children and all sorts of other things that we're called to do uh, in, in terms of uh, supporting Israel. This is what we do. We go fight for Israel. And, you know, he said he was going to get out of Syria, that it made no sense. Obama was stupid for being there. Uh, America had gotten no, no benefit out of it at all. And uh, what have we done since? You know, we've only escalated things and carried on this insulting, nonsensical Bashar al-Assad uh, chemical weapons bullshit. Absolute insult. You know, so aside from that, he's financed by the Jewish real estate magnates in New York. <laughs> and he was in debt. You know, they, the, the Trump, you know, sycophants are saying that, uh, oh, you know, you see you're reporting what CNN said. And Listen, Trump was in debt to the banking interests, including the real estate magnates uh, who he associated with to be successful in New York real estate, which is dominated by the Jews. He was in debt to the Jewish bankers to the tune of a billion dollars in personal debt. And it was up to the bankers rather to call, whether to call in the debt or to let him keep going. And they've extended the credit. Trump owed money all over town to 72 banks in all. Pomerantz represented them as a group. How close was he to going personally bankrupt? Very. Trump makes a point of saying he never went personally bankrupt. But there's a reason why the banks decided to keep Trump whole. We made the decision that he would be worth more alive to us than dead, dead meaning in bankruptcy. We don't want him to be in bankruptcy. We want him out in the world selling these assets for us. So you wanted him alive because he was a salesman and could best sell his own properties. That's correct. We kept him alive to help us. He's owned by them. I'm sorry for my good friends whom I really respect on so many different levels but totally disagree with on this who are still supporting Trump. I'm sorry, but you know, your boy is, is really going to let you down even further. What he did with Saudi Arabia is beyond disgusting treason as far as I'm concerned. Saudi Arabia is the ideological and fina financial supporter of ISIS and Al-Qaeda before it. ISIS and Al-Qaeda, according to the official version of history, have killed Americans, beheaded Americans, beheaded Christians, and done all sorts of nasty stuff, bombings around the world and whatnot. And Saudi Arabia is the ideological financier, uh, ideological uh, supporter and financier of ISIS and Al Qaeda, and Donald Trump sold hundreds of billions of dollars worth of weapons to them. That's treason.
That's material aid and support for terrorism. That's against the law. So, I don't know how anybody in their right mind can support Trump. At the same time, I don't uh, subscribe to this leftist, uh, ridiculous, fake, liberal ridiculousness that equates Trump with being, you know, the devil incarnate. This is beyond silly to me as well. And I don't buy into the whole, we need to fight each other and, and really scream at each other and go nuts. You know, Trump is an asshole and he's doing all sorts of stuff that's making the world a dangerous place and proving once again that American, the American government is owned by Jewish supremacist interests and the U.S. Congress is a den of thieves who serves them. He's only continuing that policy. He's not really all that different, um, you know. And the fact that you weren't so bothered by Obama uh, really just belies how stupid you all are. And uh, I don't really care how popular it is to say it, because it's true. None of these assholes are going to save us or serve us. They serve themselves, and they serve the bankers primarily. Okay, so that's that question. Now, the other question is, which is kind of related, this got the second most uh, request. And uh, let's see, who is this by? Um, by Bounce Knight 2. <laughs> Can Zionism be stopped even though these evil people rule the world? Um, okay, so, you know, it's important to understand that it isn't just Jews, it isn't just one group, uh, and, and really, when we get down to it, those that are running the world are are satanic, <laughs> you know, they, they, uh, they, they aspire to be gods, those at the very top of the pyramid. That is their goal. And they're breaking natural laws, universal laws, in order to try and achieve something which isn't achievable. Now this is sort of a, a spiritual kind of understanding that I have, but I'm not alone in this, you know. There are natural laws. Do you believe in karma? Do you believe what comes around goes around, you know? What goes around comes around. Do you believe that uh, there will be judgment, you know? Whether you believe in, in a monotheistic version of judgment or uh, a karmic uh, Eastern philosophy version of judgment, i.e. karma, or uh, any of those associated principles, um, it, it is very, very easy to understand that while those in power have this power, actually the only way they've managed to get it is that we as people have relinquished that power to them. This is the, the really profound truth that people haven't fully understood yet, but more and more are. We have given them power, and primarily we've given them power through the financial system. This is the main vehicle and tool that is being used to oppress us. We don't need to use that system. We can create our own financial systems that actually serve humanity and ultimately transition into a world in which really money would be irrelevant and completely unnecessary, which is definitely going to happen if we move the way I believe we will. So the, the Zionists are a patchwork of, of you know, different psychopaths and sociopaths working together uh, you know, we get into endless arguments about who exactly it is, the Jesuits, or the Illuminati, or the Archons, or Reptilians, or the Jews, or whatever. The bottom line is, it's indisputable that the financial system is the main method. The tool is monetary control and policy, usury, indebting us. Having an artificial state of scarcity in which those who run the world have an infinite supply of money, while us dipshits are fighting for the crumbs. And we're easily manipulated into fighting each other. It's the immigrants. The fucking immigrants are taking my, my jobs. And, you know, this is the kind of stupid argument that we get easily ma manipulated into that the powers that be are fostering. They're creating for us. All because they've created an artificial scarcity in which they have an infinite supply of money and resources and we're all fighting for the crumbs that are left over. We don't have to live like that. The world is actually abundant, but it's badly, badly, badly run. And it's because we've allowed that to be run. So can we beat them? Yes, of course we can. In fact, the only power that any of these assholes have is the power that we have given them. And this is the big secret that's becoming more and more known. And it's part of why I'm so optimistic, you know. As an example, you know, one last uh, point in party. How popular do you think it might be, uh, once the idea gets spread a little bit, to say, you know what, um, 
Okay, we asked the question, who are we in debt to? You keep telling us we're in debt. Who are we in debt to? The answer to that question is quite simple. I will keep repeating it. We're in debt to the bankers, basically, <laughs> because they print money at interest, which we can't ever pay because the principal, the amount owed, is actually greater than the amount of money in circulation. It's so basic. I, I, I have to keep repeating it because it's really critical and simple to understand. And people in ever-increasing numbers are understanding these things. We're enslaved through debt. Back in the good old days, we just chained you up and go out in the cotton field. <laughs> That's the way it was. Much more honest back then. Now it's a little more uh, clever. So we think we're free, but actually we're wage slaves. And we give up our, the vast majority of the time of our lives uh, to serve bullshit interests uh, that further enslave uh, our generation and future generations. So we can beat them. Absolutely. Not only do we have the power, we relinquished it, we can take that power back. Aside from that, the powers that be are actually violating natural law, universal law. You will never become the gods you aspire to be. And I'm happy that you aspire to do that and are trying to do that because the powers that be could have maintained 80-90% control of the planet. If they just had a reasonable sized middle class, they could have kept them as a buffer between the masses who were sucking on it starving and living in abject poverty, if they kept a middle class that was large enough, then they would use them as a buffer to protect themselves from the downtrodden. But the middle class has now been diminished so much that people are so uncomfortable it's forcing them to truly look at the way things are being run. And the cognitive dissonance that prevented them from seeing the truth is melting away because of that discomfort, which is why I love the discomfort that people experience. I'm grateful for all the draconian laws, and even the false flags at this point are very constructive because they only awaken more people. Their whole system is crumbling. They only could exist in the dark. And as we, people of conscience, understand the truth and become more aware of the truth, we effectively are shining a light on a place that has been hidden in the dark, which is the level of tyranny and the method of tyranny that these bastards have been using to run the world. So not only can we beat them, we will beat them or we'll destroy the whole planet, <laughs> you know? But I, that's why I'm confident, you know, really? Maybe we just need another option. I have some ideas about that. So stay tuned, I promise you, 2018 is when big, big things are gonna happen for good.